Russia has now restarted gas, talking about the Europe gas and uh, two other, other stories supplies to Europe through its biggest pipeline, Nord Stream 1, following a 10-day maintenance break. Now, there had been fears Moscow may not have resumed the flow in response to EU sanctions over the war in Ukraine. On Wednesday, the European Commission urged countries to cut gas use by 15% over the next seven months in case Russia switched off Europe's supply. Russia's President Vladimir Putin has sought to play down fears, telling reporters the state gas firm Gazprom would fulfill all its contractual obligations. The pipeline resumed operations early this morning, but a spokesman said it was only delivering 40% of its capacity. Joining me now to discuss this issue is a global affairs commentator, Kunle Falou. Thank you so much for joining me, Kunle. All right, Kunle, in case you can hear me, um, I'm just going to ask you this. Now, Russia has resumed business with Europe through its biggest pipeline after warnings that it could curb or halt supplies altogether. Is this a sign that tension is easing? Yes, thanks for having me. Um, yes, um, definitely. Uh, th this still continues to be a huge problem uh, over there uh, in Europe. And um, as far as tension goes, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war is actually far from over. Um, it's just uh, at this point, it's basically um, Russia uh, fulfilling its part of its obligation, uh, meaning that uh, this is strictly for economic reasons. It's not political as it seems, uh, because Nord Stream 2 is still under um, heavy EU sanction. Um, so uh, technically, uh, there seems, still uh, seems to be a lot of problems in that area, uh, but uh, economic reasons would not enable uh, Vladimir Putin to completely shut down Nord Stream 1. However, they are operating on a 40% uh, distribution and, and that's not going to be sufficient for it, particularly Germany, who is heavily reliant on Russian gas and oil. Uh, but as, as it is, uh, it's for uh, serving the contractual agreement between Russia and, 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 and the European uh, Union. And also um, because this, he still has to get the source and the means to finance this war. And as much as he wants to... to uh, as much as he wants to uh, hold sway and, and dissuade the, the economic uh, European Union uh, from supporting Ukraine by uh, politically or economically, uh, uh, you know, sanction, uh, politically trying to hold off on this oil, he can't do that because he needs the, the EU money, he needs the German money to continue to finance the much expensive war in Ukraine. So yes, polit uh, economic reasons, there has, it has uh, more of uh, reasons to continue to uh, supply uh, oil right. and gas to right. Germany. Right. Well understood, Kunle. Now, we know that Germany used to be the continent's largest importer before. It has suddenly reduced its dependence on Russian gas and hopefully it wants to stop using its gas altogether. Now, do you think that the affairs are justified about Russia using gas for political blackmail? Do you think that the affairs are actually justified? Well, definitely, it is justified because Russia, as it is, um, uh, they're doing way uh, more harm than good, especially in that region. Um, there seems to be a lot of disability, uh, particularly in Europe. Uh, this is the post-COVID uh, post uh, era. Uh, this inflation in U.S., inflation in Europe, uh, because the you know economies are trying to get back on their feet, but it's not really possible because uh, countries are interdependent on each other. And, and the much aggravated war in Ukraine and Russia is making it very difficult for countries to, to get it together. Um, yes, uh, as it is, um, uh, the uh, coal power uh, station in Germany has been um, reopened uh, in a bid to find alternative means of clean energy and also get um, energy uh, problem in particularly Germany situated. Uh, also, the much of the uh, scampering for for gas, uh, particularly from from uh, from Russia, is because of the change of weather. Uh, currently, we're you know it's summertime and we're gradually easing out to the winter time, meaning that a lot of households will be needing gas to heat up their houses because it's going to be very cold. So, hence the need for again 
um, you know, rushing, uh, um, you know, help and assistance. But be that as it may, um, it's never going to change because we'll continue to have uh, uh, much more policies to ensure that there would be there wouldn't be much of a uh, an over reliance on on Russian oil and Russian gas. Uh, but um, it's just a matter of time because time, you know, they don't have enough time right now. Um, we'll, we'll be getting into uh, winter in a in few months from now, so they'll have to uh, scavenge whatever they can get to continue to make the economy uh, run. Okay. Now, Kunle, in light of this recent development, we hear that industry leaders have warned that a shortfall in gas may actually lead to rationing and could trigger a recession. How do you react to this? Well, definitely uh, economic problems still abound in Europe, across uh, across Europe and, and, you know, in the West generally, uh, partly because of the, again, the Russian-Ukraine war and, again, the post-COVID, uh, you know, situation going on. And, and you know, every uh, every part of the world right now is trying to, uh, trying to you know, ration out things and get things together. But it's, it's actually harder than it's expected. Uh, however, uh, there will still continue to, to be some form of easing uh, because they, they, there's so much collaboration going. Uh, if you recall, uh, uh, President Joe Biden, uh, U.S. President, went to, to you know, OPEC, uh, uh, you know, visiting and going to different places to make sure that they continue to have these conversations and dialogue to make sure that, uh, you know, inflation and, and, you know, this current economic turmoil uh, uh, caused by the Ukraine war doesn't have much of an impact in the world and doesn't disrupt the world order. But, uh, you know, as it is, uh, everybody is scampering and, and you know, we'll continue to have dialogue among uh, world leaders to, to help salvage this uh, international economic downfall. Thank you so much, Kunle, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.